Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome to another installment of State of the Union. I am your host and Chicago Union intern, Charlie Hewson, and I have another great episode for you guys this week. If this is your first time joining us, this show is meant to give you guys information on all things Union. In this episode, I wanted to give you guys a recap of the first three games of the Chicago Union season. The first three matchups happened against the Indianapolis Alley Cats, the Madison Radicals, and the Minnesota Windchill. The Chicago Union came out of that slate of games with a 2-1 record. Let's take a deep look at each one of these games, starting with the first game of the season at home against the Indianapolis Alley Cats. The weather heavily influenced this game as it ended up being super windy and cold at the Dale Salle Institute. That helped lead the Indianapolis Alley Cats to an upset over the Chicago Union. While the Union did take the loss in this one, there were a lot of bright spots about the game plan and the way the team is going for the rest of the season. One of the big questions that I've talked about a lot on this show before, and I talked with Coach Dave Woods in the second episode of the series, is what the team would look like without Pavel Giannis. Giannis left the Chicago Union for the Los Angeles Aviators in the offseason. Since Giannis is one of the best Ultimate Frisbee players of all time, this obviously was going to leave a huge hole in the Chicago Union offense. In this first game, we saw a little bit of a change in game plan for the team, as the team ended up being a lot more aggressive than they had been in the past two years. Obviously, the Union were looking to take advantage of the talent of their wide receiver core in this one. They ended up tossing 10 hucks in a game that was definitely not made for hucks, and only completed three of them. From the beginning of the game all the way to the end, it seemed as if Paul Arters was set to take on that role that Pavel Giannis had left behind. Arters led the team in completions with 34, two of those ended up being assists, and he also added on 224 total throwing yards. Captain Jack Shanahan has been one of the many bright spots for the Chicago Union team this season. In this game, he ended up racking up three assists and 353 total yards. As I had mentioned before, it seemed as if the game plan was to exploit the talent of the deep wide receiver core that the Chicago Union had. Makeoff, Ross Barker, and Jake Steslecki all put up three goals in this one, and Jesse Johnson and Andrew Shogren both put up two each. The team was also extremely effective in the red zone, scoring 13 of their points there. While the wide receiver group did put up some awesome stats, it was not perfect the entire game. The aggressive gameplay ended up with 23 turnovers for the Union, 17 throwaways, and 5 drops included in that 23. The second half was much better than the first half in this game for the Chicago Union, but in that first half you could definitely tell the team was struggling to find an identity post Giannis. Defensively, it wasn't perfect either, but it also showed a lot of improvement on the past couple of seasons for the Chicago Union. They also forced 20 turnovers for the Indianapolis Alley Cats and had seven blocks with Jack Shanahan leading the way with two of them. The guys looked to rebound in Madison the following weekend for the first of two games happening during the Memorial Day weekend. This game went much better, ending in a 20-18 win for the Chicago Union. It was a slugfest that went all the way down to the last quarter where the Chicago Union went on a 3-1 run to win the game and close it out. The weather was much more cooperative for the Chicago Union, and the team played a much smaller game, completing a staggering 334 passes in 350 attempts. They only tossed half the hucks as they did in the last game, and also completed one more of them, resulting in an 80% completion percentage on their hucks. They also cut down on the turnovers in this game, only having 16 in this one. On the other side of the disc, the defense had another awesome game in this one, forcing 19 turnovers. They also only held Madison to 10 total offensive scores. The team added on 9 more blocks on the season, with Jake Steslecki adding on 3 of his own. Steslecki had himself a game in this one, also scoring a Callahan, making him only the 12th player in AUDL history to have multiple Callahans in a career. That Callahan was just one of 9 defensive scores the team had in this game, in a total of 21 break chances that they had. This was a huge game of firsts for a lot of Chicago Union players too. I want to give a huge congratulations to Didzis Maldaris, who scored his first Chicago Union and AUDL goal in his career since being signed by the Chicago Union. Maldaris is a European club legend and should be a key contributor in another Chicago Union championship run. 
In contrast to Maldares, Andrew Shogren has scored a lot of goals in his career, but one thing he had never done before Saturday was win an AUDL game. Shogren spent his first 37 games of his career in Detroit with the Mechanics, who, in classic Detroit sports team style, are currently on a 64 game losing streak. In his time with Detroit, had become one of the greatest receivers in AUDL history, but could never rack up a win. Shogren not only got to enjoy his first career win this weekend, but also got to enjoy his second career win when the Chicago Union beat the Minnesota Windchill at the De La Salle Institute on Sunday. It was a low scoring affair that had a ton of defensive highlights and a lot of penalty yards being given away. The Union defense was once again a highlight of this game, adding on another six blocks as a team and forcing 19 turnovers once again. One of those 19 turnovers happened to be a second consecutive Callahan in a game for the Chicago Union, this time being Wyatt Meckler in the fourth quarter. The defense also converted eight other break chances in this game. Going back to Meckler, he had himself a game in this one, adding on another goal and three assists. Offensively, Nick Pappas stepped up with three goals, and a lot of the passing and scoring in this game was spread out amongst the team, highlighting the versatility and depth this team has shown over the course of the first three games in the season. Nate Goff and Asher Lance missed both of these games this past weekend, and Sam Kaminsky sat out on the Sunday game against the Minnesota Windchip. Rookies like Axel Agami, Meckler, and Malderas stepped up in key moments of these games in order to give Chicago Union a boost in these wins. Veterans like Stess Lecky, Jesse Johnson, Jack Shanahan, and Paul Arters all also stepped up in leadership roles as a lot of the older, more veteran players were out in these games. Hopefully we can get some of these guys back to help build the depth even more as we look forward to a rematch on Saturday against the Minnesota Windchill. With that, I wanted to leave you guys with some of the top highlights from the Chicago Union in these past three games. I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again in a couple weeks. Maldera's firing that disc deep. He's got Jesse Johnson out there who makes a spectacular play for the score. Chicago just making it look easy right now. Each team had four breaks, six holds, and one Callahan. Great adjustment there by Pappas. And then a layout from Bruner. And to the end zone, the Radicals defender Thomas Coolidge goes flying by. And Nick Pappas scores the break. That's two straight goals to begin the third quarter for the Union. And so over the last few years, just always sort of reading each other's mind. That one going up deep for Goff, and he makes a fantastic catch for the disc for the score. Wow, under two pressure, classic, classic Nate Goff. Love to see that quick offense as well. Jack Shanahan to Nate Goff. Farther to go, farther to work. Mm -hmm and that burns clock time. Jesse Johnson out there, wow. makes up. That coach's timeout unable to, to make a, the union blink here. So they're starting to find some stride. What an excellent grab by Jesse Johnson. Look, and it looks like they've already done so. They start out with a zone. There's the Callahan to get the union break train rolling. Chicago takes a 2-1 lead. The Nice calming presence for them in the opening. Pappas shooting it long. Axel Agami is there. And Chicago has scored three in a row. For Jack. Ooh. And it's Callahan wow. country for Wyatt Meckler. <laughs> Wyatt Meckler with the Callahan. The field priest with a nice careful catch. Flinging it into the end zone for Pappas for the score. Oof. Yeah, didn't love the throw, but do love the outcome. <laughs> Firing deep. Milan Rivas is out there. Great catch. Makes a fantastic play recovery for the score. Wow. They waited, 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 and then pulled that.